what's, what's happening? Like, have you ever been in a social situation? So Mark Wahlberg comes in, it's a little bit dead, and we're all geeking out about it, and then it's time for this girl and I to check our stuff out, like to give them our money and leave for the day. And we go to the office, and there's two managers in there, and one of them asks if Mark Wahlberg's still here. And finally, she decides she's going to speak, right? This girl, Heather, I'll tell you her name. And she, I'll tell it to you. And she goes, oh, I don't know what the big deal is, Renee. I think he's more your time than mine. And I go, did you mean type? Did you forget the, did you mean type? And she's like, no, you're older than me, right? Yeah. It's not Clark fucking Gable. That's the name of the table. It's not like I was like, ooh, let me draw my handkerchief and see if he notices my great dams. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if Gary Cooper's coming in. Like, it's Mark Wahlberg. He just did the happening. And so finally this guy came in and I was just stunned. I was like, I'm not, no, I'm not 19, but I'm not 80 fucking two. You know what I mean? And then I was like, you don't know Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch? And this kid came in and he was like, 20, and I asked him, he was like, hell yeah, Mark Wahlberg, good vibrations. I go, go fuck yourself, and I left. <laughs> they have not had me train her since. Um, I, she made me feel bad about my heart. Um, <laughs> I was like, I went, got like an anti-wrinkle cream when I went home. Um, I live in this apartment building, which is interesting, because I feel like they've housed mostly crazy people. This girl moved in, I didn't see her for six months, I only heard her sing Celine Dion. <laughs> very loud, it was very loud. She thinks she can sing. And so, the, uh, she finally came out, right? It was like this big deal, like she's coming out, we're gonna see her, we're gonna see her face. She came out, she looked impeccable, you guys. Like she, fresh, like it looked as if she pulled the tags off her clothes, everything was pressed and steamed. Fresh gym shoes out the box, real confident. If it were 1991. <laughs> Seriously, I was waiting for her to be like, want to see all my cool VHS tapes? I was like, hey, Beverly Hills 90210 called. They want their camel toe back, right? <laughs> right? I'm not good at those things. When people say, hey, the 70s called. They want their shit back. I don't know how. I don't get those. I had this girl that works like, sluts called, they want their slut shirt back or something like that. And I tried to hang with her one day and I was like, yeah. Blockbuster call, they want their movie back. <laughs> she was like, what, what? They did call. I was like, I know that, I guess, I guess that can happen. Because I guess the 70s can't really call. So this wasn't a burn. <laughs> in any way. Sad, isn't it? Um, I am originally from Chicago, like you mentioned. I had ridiculous road rage living here. Ridiculous, like my hair got ugly. Shit was bad, you know what I mean? But when I got to Los Angeles, I thought, Look, you don't know who's driving in these cars. They could be holding a GAT or an Emmy. Like, you don't know what's going down, you know? So it changed to road nice. Give it some road nice, you know? So I was driving a couple weeks ago um, in front of this Lexus SUV. Bitch. It's a little bitch. Um, and we were in rush hour traffic, right? Like a green arrow to go left. And the green, the green arrow just freshly turned green. Fresh. Trickles are red, still in it. Okay? And I can't turn. No one can go anywhere. And she's laying on her horn. Like crazy. And I normally would be like, just, you know, immature and go off, right? But I didn't say anything. I did not care. Like, I was listening to No Air by Jordan Sparks, and that calmed me. And I was like, tell me how I'm going to break up No Air. And she's still like honking for like three minutes, 56 seconds. That's how long the song is. And um, every time I would catch her in the rearview mirror, she'd be like, you can't drive. And like honking, and, like giving me the middle finger, and like, I don't know what she was doing, you know, or she was really rude. Until she, and I was fine, I'm telling you, I was so calm, I was so impressed with myself. And she, until she came up to the side of me like this, like where you are, and like the devil and my baby heart came out. And I want to tell you what I, what I, what's about, what you're about to see, I went home and bragged about for days. I was so impressed with my creativity. That just oozed out of me. I don't know what happened. So she's here, and I look at her, and she's like being a real bitch face to me. And I look at her and I go, <laughs> I know, right? I don't know where it came from. I told her her face made me want to vomit. And she looked confused. She was kind of like, and I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm, no good. You know, she like drove away. And I'm like, she's going to cry. She's going to fucking cry. And the moral of all this, here's the moral. Telling a woman that she's horrific looking that makes you want to regurgitate anything you have put in your mouth that day beats counter the middle finger for the rest of your life. I'm Renee Gautier. That's the end of my set.